Hey, I believe I'm live. Okay, the internet is having a meltdown. So it's making me sign in to everything that I ever had. All accounts are not recognized. And I'm getting pictures for accounts that I have never had on those accounts. So that aside, today I want to talk about Heaven's Temple of Learning. So this site is called Take What Rings True. So the whole idea is I share spiritual stuff. You guys decide, do you believe it or not? So if I say something you don't believe, let it go. If I say something you believe, great, you agree with me. So this information is from trans classes where my mentor, Sylvia Brown, would go sit on a bench on the other side, not remember what was going on. And her spirit guide would come in. In this case, it was Francine. And tell us about stuff. So this time, she told us about the temple of learning. So on the other side are many temples and many halls that are helpful to us on earth. So this one is called the temple of learning. And it is a rectangular hall. It reminds me of many universities because on the outside of this temple, you find colonnades with pillars, um, every uh, columns, every like about eight feet. So if you walk around the outside, you'll also notice what other people usually identify this temple as Egyptian lotuses, um, which are ordaining, ordaining, ornating, whatever. They're decorating the columns that are around the temple. And another thing that makes it an Egyptian temple is there's a giant obelisk at the main entrance. And you'll also notice that the doors have different languages on it from all different cultures and symbols like hieroglyphs and cuneiform. So it's a nice place to visit. It's very ornate on the outside. It has a golden emanation. There's like golden light just coming off of this temple. So it's recognizable for being looking Egyptian and also the golden light that's coming off of it. So on the inside, it's rather plain and it has small windows bringing in light. But since it's filled with all the writings of earth from all time, from all places, even the writings that have been lost to earth itself. So the libraries of Alexandria, the writings from Samaria and Atlantis, all oral knowledge is available there too. And you can see a replica of the Rosetta Stone. You can see any singer or composer's music. So what you do is decide one thing you want to know about. Not you want to know about Abraham Lincoln, Socrates, Plato, um, how pyramids were built, one thing. When you go to the temple, you choose one thing that you want to know about. And say you were going to write a book about how the pyramids were really made. Then you might have more than one time that you go in there. And it's often better to pick one subject rather than um, go in and try and see all the books about Abraham Lincoln or all the writings about Abraham Lincoln. Maybe you want to know about his presidency, or you want to know about um, the knowledge that he gained, or you want to know about studying to be a lawyer. So pick one thing that you want to know about for one visit. So um, when you get there, you go through the doors, and there's facilitators thousands of facilitators who will help you. So you tell them what you want to know, what subject, so a place, a time, a person. Maybe you want to know about astronomy or calculus. 
And before you get there, it's important for you to intend to remember and intend to easily get infusion. Now, infusion is just like thoughts that come to you that are not yours. So if you want to learn Italian, you could go there and have a download of information that is Italian. You know, the being able to speak, the intonation, the accent. So, for example, one of my friends is a kinesthetic learner, and she was taking uh, an advanced course trying to, well, she did, become a facilitator for emergencies. So she was a nurse, and she had never taken algebra, but she had to know algebra to do this course because she was going to be a facilitator if there was some kind of big disaster then she would be able to figure out, okay, what kind of medical supplies, how many people, where should they go, what kind of transportation, uh, do they need boats, do they need uh, cars, do they need ambulances, what do they need? All those things, she would be able to immediately come up with a plan for whatever this was, this event, incident. But she didn't know algebra. So we did a hypnosis session, took her to the hall of learning, asked and intended for her to be able to understand algebra. And she didn't get the information right then, but that night she had a dream and she was able to understand because of the way they showed her about algebra. So they tuned into the way she learns on earth in this lifetime and downloaded the information so she could understand. So just know that it's possible. So what would you like to know about? What subject, what person, what time, what place? So the temple of learning is one of the busiest temples and obviously it's not for problems that we're trying to solve here. Well, it could be for problems that are um, knowledge. You want knowledge, but it's not to make you heal. It's not to make you feel better. It's a place to go to learn things. And people from the other side, not just us who are incarnate, but people from the other side are always going there too to find out stuff. So one nice thing is you're surrounded by experts. So say you want to know about Socrates and you ask a facilitator for that. They may send someone to just give you a one-to-one -one personal lesson or direct you to the place where you can find out about Socrates. Maybe you just want to have a general overview or you want to find out about how were those pyramids built? So they will tell you where to go to find that out. Maybe uh, you're a high school student and you are having trouble with astronomy or calculus or um, world history, then you can ask to go there and get infusion about whatever your topic is. Now, I have a friend who homeschooled her kids. And then uh, when they went to study for their careers of choice, she had them download the information. So when they were homeschooled, whatever topic they were doing, they had learned how to download the information from the other side and easily be able to retain it and not have to study 10,000 books to figure out, you know, what, what was going on in that subject. In fact, um, I know one of them became, I think it was a chef, some kind of a culinary thing, as I recall. And she downloaded the information from the other side and she didn't have to study. And she got like the top of her class. So consider this, if you want knowledge in an area, 
consider starting to go to the temple of learning. And it's especially good for your high school student, your college student who wants to know more about some area. I could have used it in college when I was going home on a Greyhound bus and the bus broke down and I left my book that I was going to have a test on in the bus and could never get it. And of course, the university did not have any extra books in the, um, what do you call those things? In the school bookstore. So I was like playing it by ear and taking mad notes when he was giving lectures. But um, I didn't get an A in that class and probably because I didn't have the book. Okay, anyway, that aside. So say you want to check out the ancient Sanskrit scrolls or figure out how to read hieroglyphs or learn any language in the whole universe, not just earth, in the whole universe. All of that's available to you. You could read the unaltered writings of Jesus. They don't keep anything a secret in that library. Maybe you want to read a specific book. Maybe you want to get more clarity about something. Now, remember, if you're if you're reading about calculus and you're on the other side and you're in the hall of learning or temple of learning, um, you can ask for an expert to help you. If you're stuck or you want clarity on something, there are experts to help you. So maybe you want to know about King Arthur or Stonehenge or Lemuria. So choose one subject at a time. You can always make a list of all the stuff you want to know and choose one at a time. Maybe you want to find out how did innocent Edison invent stuff? Because obviously he was pretty good at it. Maybe you want to come to this temple about that inventors. Maybe you're going to start with Edison and then you're going to go to Ford and then you're going to go to whoever else you want to study about how people invent and what they do and get the frames of mind and the ways they did that. So you can choose any time period. Maybe you want to go check out caveman times. Maybe you want to go check out uh, Knights Templar. Or you're going to just study up on something you've always been interested in. Or maybe you're going to uh, be a writer and you want to write a biography about someone. Maybe you're taking a class on earth and you want to know about that subject. So go to the temple of learning and intend to get infusion and remember it. So you're gaining that information from outside yourself. We often get infusion from your spirit guide, um, an expert that you've asked, I remember uh, I I asked for information, uh, oh, okay, I asked for information on a specific subject and an expert came to me. I knew I was getting downloads of, of information from, not me, sometimes God comes and gives you information. In fact, every day there's like this rainbow cloud that covers you. Your spirit guide and your angel back away because God is giving you infusion and communicating with you. Your higher self can give you infusion, your soul. So you can get infusion. I remember many, many times talking at church and I'd be talking on a specific subject. And all of a sudden I start talking about, you know, giving examples or adding information that I didn't know. It just came to me. And often when I'm writing something, I'll get clarity or a great example or a way to say something. So be open to it. Ask to be open to infusion and remember it. You can always double check on that information. You don't have to take it as reality till you check on it. 
So remember, you can go to this temple when you're asleep and ask to remember. You can go through meditation. You can go through hypnosis, self-hypnosis, or you can contact somebody like me, and I'll be glad to guide you to whatever temple you want to go to. You can astrally project. If you're astrally projecting or going through meditation, then you just look for that Egyptian temple, rectangular, with the colonnades and the decorations of lotus and the big obelisk in front. Now, remember, you don't have to go through the main entrance. A lot of times when I guide clients to the other side, they don't go through the main entrance of whatever temple it is. They'll go through a side entrance. Maybe that's their favorite entrance when they are on the other side. Who knows? Or maybe they're really a facilitator from that temple or that hall, and that's their entrance. If you feel very comfortable, like, you know, been here, done that, it may be that that's someplace you work. So one of the halls or temples that we've talked about, if you feel uh, an affinity towards it, you feel very comfortable there, it may be that you visit it often, or it may be you're a facilitator there. So just know the temple of learning is available to you. And you can practice asking for infusion and to remember it. and asking for downloads of that information so that you keep it. So you do learn Italian. You do find out about inventors and write your book or invent yourself. Or you find out about uh, caveman times. Whatever it is you're interested in or want to know about, this is the place to find out. So when you're asleep, meditating, through hypnosis, or astrally projecting. All of those are available to you. And remember, a lot of times you don't get there the first time. Like I said a while ago, it's like riding a bike. You know, you have to like try and balance and then you get there. So keep intending to go to this temple if that's somewhere you would like to go. And if you need help, contact me and I'll guide you there. So thank you very much for joining me today. I hope the internet starts working better. I know part of it could be the eclipse, the eclipses, because it's affected like 10 days before, 10 days after. And all of the internet seems to be a little off today. So thank you for joining me. And I hope to see you next Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time and whatever time it is in your time zone. I think it's like 5 o'clock p.m. in the United Kingdom. I thought it's GMT time. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll see you next time. Bye.